it's Wednesday again, which means it's Wednesdays with Wendy. So here we are talking today about seismic waves and playing with slinkies. I super love slinkies. So if you remember last week, we talked about faults and earthquakes. So you have a fault and that's a break in the rock where earthquakes happen. You have the plates moving around over the surface of the earth, the places where they come together, the places where you're most likely to have earthquakes. You have stress and strain that builds up in the rocks and eventually the friction along the fault surface is going to move. And when it moves, it sends out energy in the form of waves in all directions. So you can imagine dropping a pebble in a pond and those waves travel out in all directions. Earthquakes are very much the same. The earthquake happens, waves travel out in all directions, both across the surface of the earth and through the earth's interior. So every earthquake creates lots of different waves. We're gonna talk about two specific types that are body waves. That means they go through the interior of the earth. The first one we're gonna talk about is called a P wave. This is a primary wave and you can remember it as the push and pull wave. So we're gonna stretch the slinky out and now each one of the little coils of the slinky, think of that as a piece of rock. So I'm gonna be the earthquake over here, okay? And I'm gonna push. See how the slinky moves? Zoom in on the slinky. I have my husband, Scott, here. Watch how each of the coils move. So what was happening? You have the earthquake pushing that way, the wave moved in that direction, and each one of these coils moved this way. Pushed and pulled, pushed and pulled, pushed and pulled. Those are called compressions and dilatations. So, okay, now the S wave. This is a slower wave. It travels at about 60% of the speed of the P wave. It's a secondary wave, a shear wave. I call it a shaky, snaky wave. And so I'm gonna be the earthquake again, but instead of pushing, I'm gonna go sideways. Now watch how the coils move. So each individual coil is moving this way, but the wave is still moving that way. Let me show you that again. So that's a shearing wave. The direction of each particle is perpendicular to the direction that the wave is moving. P waves, the push-pull wave, those travel through liquids and solids. S waves, because they're shear waves, they don't travel through liquids. And that's how we know what some of the materials inside the earth are made of. So we've had some questions since last week. I really wanna play with the slinky, but I'm gonna put it down. So because we're all sheltering in place and staying at home so that we can be safe and healthy, um, a lot of the noise that people produce has been reduced. Cars, industrial noise, people walking around, all of these things put energy into the ground. And that energy can be detected on seismometers, earthquake machines, just like earthquakes can be. So now that people aren't moving around over the surface as much, the earth is much quieter. We call that ambient noise. So because all these people aren't walking around, the cars aren't driving, the trains aren't going as often, the earth is quieter, which means that the seismometers are able to detect even more earthquakes because they're not having to filter out all of that other ambient background noise that human populations create. So that's a pretty unexpected or pretty cool thing that's happening uh, because of the, the virus and what's happening in the world right now. Another thing that's happened was there was a magnitude 6.5 earthquake in Idaho. Now Idaho is part of the Basin and Range province, which is in the Western United States. This area is being stretched apart. So see all these little uh, mountain ranges and valleys, the basins, are the valleys, the ranges are the mountains. That area is being stretched or pulled apart. So Idaho has had lots of earthquakes in the past. Uh, there was a magnitude 6.9 in 1983. It's not unexpected to have earthquakes there. But remember, if you feel earthquake shaking, what are you gonna do? You take protective action. You drop down to the ground, take cover underneath a sturdy object and hold on until the shaking stops. Remember, don't be scared. Be prepared. All right, we'll see you next Wednesday. Have a good week. Stay safe. Wash your hands.